Um, snapbacks are important because if you don't see snapbacks, then you're just gonna get lose your cutting stones. That's fine, Wicked. I'm just picking on you. Uh, but I am here if you need me. Um, but sacrificing a couple stones. Uh, I feel like it's kind of important, but not in the wording that you're using. So... It's very important to identify if these are cutting stones or not. If they're cutting stones, you almost always... If they're cutting stones of a two groups that are... One of them's not alive. If they're cutting two groups that are both alive, that's not important. That's not the same thing. Cutting stones or stones that are disconnecting slash unsettling, these stones are worth saving. Otherwise, sacrifice them. Simple enough. The exception to that. Okay, so let me, let's just say let's just state a rule: five stones or less that are not cutting stones or unsettling stones should not be saved. The exception to that rule is if it's an area and not just stones directly. That means like a star point. If the star point dies, it's like. 20 points in the corner, right? It's a, it's not just one stone. It's that entire chunk of the board. Whereas if four stones that are in a straight line in the center just get surrounded and die, that's eight points. So how can one stone in the corner... Or sorry, do you need to realize that one stone in a corner is worth 20 points and four stones in the center is worth eight points? Eight points is easy to sacrifice. Ten points is easy to sacrifice because a big move is worth more than ten points. Um... It's a teaching game. Oh, it's supposed to be or. Sorry. Teaching game or game review. Um, anyway, hopefully that answers your question. The next question was, how do I keep points in fighting? Ah, you gain profit. So, what is the goal of attacking? It's to gain profit. What is profit, you might ask? Is it getting points? Yes and no. It actually has nothing to do with how many points you get. Profit is gaining more than what your opponent's getting. What that means is when you are attacking and surrounding, even if you're getting like one point, that's profit, as long as your opponent's getting zero. Usually, if they run away and connect, they get zero points, maybe one or two at most. If they make eyes, they probably get two points to five points, usually for two eyes. Uh, not that many. All you have to do as an attacker is get more than that. It doesn't matter how much you get, as long as you get more than that. If they get two points, as long as you make more than two points, stay solid, surround them, push them away, you can gain some thickness that'll affect the rest of the board. That's more than two points. Thickness is usually worth two points per piece of thickness. If you get, like, five points, cool, that's good. As long as you do that and get to the next big move, then you're getting five points for free. That's a lot, okay? That is that is a lot. So let's talk about theory of how to win the game. Um, the theory of how to win the game is first and foremost, black plays first. Theoretically, both players play the biggest move. So black plays first, he plays the first biggest move. Uh, White plays second, he plays the second biggest move. Black plays the third biggest, white plays the fourth biggest, etc., etc. Black will have an advantage because he got the first biggest move. But white has Comey. So theoretically, if both players play the biggest move every single turn, the difference will be about half a point. The scale of points will be about half a point. The way you win is at some point, you have to make a positive exchange. This means not getting 100 points, it means getting one point over what your opponent got. Make an exchange that you got one point more than your opponent. One or more points. You make a positive exchange. Then you get back to the big moves and exchange big moves, and you're up by whatever that exchange was. That's how you win. You only need to win by half a point. It doesn't matter if you win by half a point 
or 100 points. That is irrelevant. What matters is that you have more than your opponent. The biggest mistake many players make about the idea of this game is they think it's about getting the maximum amount of points. That is false. Don't care how much point, how many points you make. If your opponent has just as much, you have a zero gain. Think of it as uh, income to debt ratio. How many of you guys have seen families that make a thousand dollars a month, and their debts are about a thousand dollars a month? And families that make $3,000 a month, and they have a debt of $2,900 a month. The exchange rate from positive to negative is still approximately zero. They both struggle the exact same amount. Maybe the commodities that they're in debt, they had better commodities because that's how they got in debt in the first place. You could argue that, but my point still stands. When you're thinking finances or business profit, you're not thinking about how much money you're making. You're thinking about that income to debt ratio. So, and go, you're not thinking about, uh, hey Reza, okay. You're not thinking about how many points you're getting. You're thinking about the exchange rate of how many you get versus what your opponent gets. A positive exchange rate is getting more than your opponent. A negative exchange rate is getting less than your opponent. An even exchange rate is exchanging a big move for a big move usually, is both players get something. What you really want to avoid in your games, if you want to stop being a Q player, get rid of all of your negative exchange rates. This is a lot more easier said than done. But the difference between Q players and Don players is Don players have... Uh, well, I don't want to say that. I want to say it. That's, that's false. Where you are losing your games is going to be at some point you make a negative exchange rate that's that's the rule of the game right that's the rules you got to figure out where those are how the exchange rates work and go is about understanding the exchange rates and learning how to make positive exchanges all across the board positive or even exchanges the reason it's okay to waste the move to defend is because we prevent a negative exchange rate for a zero exchange rate so, or maybe your opponent makes a positive, so you make a small negative exchange rate here to prevent a lot of more negative exchange rates later. Okay, that's fine. That's an investment. You invest one move to prevent debt later, right? You can think of it that way. Defense is an investment to prevent later negative exchange rates. An attack is profit. That is only positive exchange rates. Exchanging big moves is a very good exchange rate that you need to keep track of because big moves are the most valuable moves, technically speaking. But the way you win is you make positive exchange rates at some point. Uh, when you're ahead, uh, that's, that's, that's a false mindset. Um, So when you're ahead, it's not about defending or playing slow moves. It's about securing your victory. So from there, you go to the win percentage. So when, we stu when they studied AlphaGo on how he's making his decisions, when he approached the game, the way he, like, when you're evaluating a move, it's about the exchange rate. But when you're evaluating a, who's uh, who's going to win, it's a win percentage. So, this is, this is just another theoretical argument. But when they were studying AlphaGo, AlphaGo did not care about increasing that uh, point difference to the max value. Did not care about that at all. He cared about keeping... A positive value over his opponent. What that means is he cared about the win percentage over how much he won by. So this means he tried to make it get somewhere a positive exchange rate and then he tried to make sure he would not lose any negative exchange rate after that or tried not to play a negative exchange rate after that. So that way he would always have that that lead. So 
What that means is after he gained a lead, he didn't take risk or he didn't leave weakness, but rather he fixed it while also exchanging big moves or he exchanged big moves and stopped worrying about some little thing. It's, it's, it's a lot more difficult to do than just defend. Um, but the idea is don't take heavy risk when you're winning. So, for example, this might be a bad example because I'm not a poker player. But don't play a high-risk hand if you have a lot of money, if you're going to win. Just keep making okay exchanges and keep your lead. You don't need to increase your lead. Now, maybe in poker that's different. I don't know. Um, you don't need to win by a lot. You just need to secure your victory by preventing your opponent from making a positive exchange rate on their end. So you can make neutral exchange rates. You can make um, positive exchange rates, yeah. But what you want to do is prevent any negative exchange rate that you have for the rest of the game as long as you're winning. So what you do is you take less risk. You play more solid. You play efficient, but safe and solid. You don't do any high-risk invasions. But when you're losing, it's the opposite. You start looking for those high-risk invasions. You start looking for all-or-nothing plans, stuff like that. Um... Chess is a better example. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I don't understand that well enough. But um, my point is, when you're winning, you want to think about the win percentage and the risk reward. You want to lower that risk when you're winning. But when you're losing, you need to increase that risk to try and get a bigger reward, if that makes sense. So it's not... It's not about playing slow, safe, nothing like that. You still got to go for the, you still got to identify the weaknesses. You still got to um, play big moves. If you don't play big moves, that's where you start losing your your win, uh, your win um, lead very quickly. If you start getting over defensive and stop playing those big moves, those big moves are where you're going to make the even exchange rates. If you don't play big moves, your opponent's going to get a very big lead very quickly. So if you're not playing those big moves, if your opponents aren't playing the big moves, just play big moves and you win. Like that's one of the most profitable moves is a big move. The attack and defense is all about the exchange rates, but you want to do it in sente so you can get to the next big move. It's about exchanging big moves with your opponent. So, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if I explained that the best way. 